Welcome back to r slash legal advice, where people ask questions, get advice and we get satisfaction. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community and without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, Texas found a starter interrupt device installed on my car, removed it and now the bank is threatening repossession. I took my car into one of the dealer shops to have recall work done. Friend of mine who works there told me that I have a GPS slash interrupt device installed on my car. He had to explain to me what that was, basically a remote switch that can turn off your car anywhere, you know, because no one ever died from having their car stop working before, right? So I called my bank and asked them about this, even gave them the serial number for the device. They told me that they do not install those devices on cars and it must be from the previous owner. My car is used obviously. So me and a friend removed it today and not even 3 hours later I received a call from the bank. They told me that device is the property of their bank and must remain installed for the duration of the loan. I told them what was said in the last conversation with the bank and he tells me that the person I talked to did not know what they were talking about. Now they are threatening to repo the car even though there are only 4 payments left. Can they actually repo the car for this? My payments are not late and my car has 4 payments left and I am getting my tax check soon so I just want to pay it off but I am worried about them repossessing it anyways. Also check the lease agreement and it has nothing there about the device and its requirement for the loan. And a user in the comments suggested, check your paperwork on your car loan, it probably states that it has to be installed. Also, as I understand, they don't just stop the car in the middle of the road, once it is turned on it just prevents it from starting again. And you know guys, at the moment I am watching a lot of the Dave Ramsey show highlights on YouTube and I gotta say, for some reason, that show is very strangely addictive. You know, to me it is just super interesting to hear about people making around $20,000 a year but then having a car loan for around $600 a month. I can definitely highly recommend that channel and I am curious, did you ever take out a car loan? And if so, do you regret it? Let us know in the comments. Texas update starter interrupt device found on my car. So I found some things out. The financial department for my bank, Wells Fargo, is closed on weekends. However, I was able to call back the number that called me complaining about my removal of the device. This company is open on the weekends. They are a sort of collections company that is authorized by my first bank to collect payments and repossess the car. Apparently this has been one giant misunderstanding that could have some consequences for the company involved. A year after I got my car, I refinanced it, it took some time to track down, but according to the original loan contract it required the device on the car. The loan contract makes no mention of the device and has no requirement for it to be there. I read over it again and again to make sure, but it looks like I am clear there. The original lender was a CD Walmart type bank, they only operate in the Metroplex and are very much into predatory lending. I had to dump this bank after they would repeatedly refuse to refund overdrive charges on things that were double charged and immediately refunded. For example, I would pay a bill, it would show in my bank records as being paid twice, but one instance immediately refunded. They would try to slap a $25 overdraft on that, unless I specifically complained. They were kind of well known for doing this and have many complaints with the BBB for these practices. So that gives you an idea of the people I was working with. Once my credit was much better, thanks to some smart decisions on my part, I got with Wells Fargo. The company that does the GPS monitoring and repossessing was not informed by that bank that the car was refinanced. While on the phone with them, I was able to determine that they have comprehensive logs of where I go, they have been tracking my every movement for the last 4 years. They keep logs so that if the device is ever removed, their repo men have a list of my top visited places so they can snatch the car. Even if I were still under the original loan contract, would this type of monitoring be legal? They still have repo men out looking for my car, it is locked up and at my work they require a badge to get on the parking lot. Also, my work does not let repo men on the lot unless they are accompanied by law enforcement with a lawful order. 
which by the way never happens. So the car is safe for now, I drive another car when I want to run errands, so I am covered on that front. The company that is trying to repo my car refuses to listen to me until I show them the new loan agreement. But they don't have any offices open on the weekend and it looks like I am going to have to take a day off of work or at least a late start to handle this. So the question is this, is this kind of monitoring they have been doing legal? They have every single stop my car has made for more than 10 minutes in the last 4 years recorded in their locks. This is a massive invasion of privacy. And a user in the comments said, OP, there is a lot of very bad advice here, call a consumer attorney in your state, you may have an action available against a sleazy bank, depending on the facts. Source, I am a consumer attorney in a different state. Also, you should check the National Association of Consumer Advocates at naca.net. And guys, I gotta say, I really didn't expect this, but this seems to be one of the more crazy stories we have read so far on r slash legal advice, so I'm curious, what would you do if you were in OP's shoes? And in addition, please don't forget to support me in the comments by posting some star emojis and liking the video. Thank you so much in advance. Your help is very much appreciated and it helps me out tremendously. Update again, starter interrupt device found on my car, car repossessed illegally. So I got a hold of Wells Fargo today and informed them of the situation. Basically, they told me that my car should not have the device on it and that the old lender must have put it on there. I told them of the repossession order and they gave me a bunch of resources to contact if the car is repossessed illegally, all within the bank. So had all of the paperwork ready to go to turn into the local branch of the monitoring company only to find my car gone. They repossessed my car within the 15 minutes it took for me to get my paperwork. I called Wells Fargo and told them about the repossession and now things are out of my hands. Wells Fargo is looking at legal action against both my old bank and the monitoring company unless they return the car within a few days. I borrowed a car from my parents and I am driving it around for now. I went to the monitoring company and showed them all of the paperwork, my original loan, the release papers and the new loan from Wells Fargo. I then informed them that I let Wells Fargo know and they will be pursuing legal action. The guy did not seem to care, saying they get sued twice a month. I do not know whether this is true or not. He told me that my car is not at that location and the location of the car will be known in 24 hours. This was a lie, my car was in his back lot and I told him that I could see it out the window and even told him that it has the same dent in the bumper from last year's snowmageddon when someone could not stop in time. He refused to allow me access to the car as he had to verify all of the information presented to him. I went outside and called back Wells Fargo. They told me there was nothing they could do from there, they gave me advice on how to get the car back but said that unless he releases the car that there was nothing I could do legally until he either releases it or is forced to by a lawful order. I am looking at getting a lawyer as well, I am kind of desperate to get the car back now as the car has some high dollar items in the trunk, couple of laptops, one owned by my work, my Xbox One and my PS4. I went to a LAN party this weekend and did not get a chance to get that stuff back in my house. Worked a half day today to handle this crap. This whole thing turned into a shitstorm real quick. And a user in the comments said, nice on the updates, sorry if it is not going so well for you and the car. Have you tried calling the police or going to file a police report? If I am understanding your story correctly, it sounds like your car was illegally repossessed and would be considered stolen. The monitoring company had an agreement with your old loan company to take back the car, but since you refinanced the loan to Wells Fargo, neither the monitoring company nor the old bank should have a claim on the car. One of them, or both, have stolen your car, no? And honestly, ripe stars, that is exactly what it sounds to me. This is obviously a case of a bank essentially taking back this car, or rather stealing it. Let me know what you think about this crazy story in the comments. And the next one is the final update to the repossessed car story. So I went with a good group of friends to the monitoring company, three friends whom I have known all my life wanted to come along in case they tried to say that I did not have the stuff in my trunk. So I go to the office and talk to the guy. 
He basically apologizes to me and says that he was acting off of instructions which he thought were valid. He said that he has people try to claim everything to try to shift blame in these cases of repoing and said that he needed to verify with my old bank. He did say that the starter interrupt device was the property of his company and that I had to return it. I told him that the device would have been in the trunk of the car, he told me that the trunk was empty when he got a hold of it. I told him that the repo driver had it then as well as my gaming systems, a personal laptop and a company laptop that belongs to insert my job here. He kind of got a scowl on his face and looked like he was about to argue with me, so I told him to come out of my car with me. I wanted him there as I took a video on my cell phone of the car. He followed me out but said my friends had to stay there. We get out to the car and I find that all of my stuff in the trunk is gone. My cell phone charging cable is gone and my aux connector is gone. Don't really give a damn about the micro USB cable and aux stereo cable as I have a ton of those but we argue over the electronics in the back. Finally, he has enough and tells me I need to leave. I have to sign some papers and pay a fee. I drove my car around the front to their front door and came back inside. I signed the papers he needed signed but refused to pay the fee saying they had my electronics as payment. My friends had left by that point and their cars were gone. So I get home to find all of my friends there and my stuff there. They heard me arguing with the guy about my stuff and decided to look around his office. He was the only one working in the office at that time as the two other ladies were out at lunch when this happened. They found a storeroom with several high dollar items inside, some guns locked in a case, Xbox 360s, TVs, power tools, lots of power tools and found my Xbox One and PS4 on the table in the room. My two laptops were locked in a case, however, the guy had the keys to the case on a packboard in his office. Their story they gave to me was that one of them walked back behind the camera towards the back door, he reached up and unplugged the camera while the other two searched. They found the storeroom with all of the stuff and were able to find both laptops easily. My laptop has a decal of Sons of Anarchy on the back and the company laptop has one of those property of X company if found call X number stickers. The PS4 and Xbox had stickers on them from the LAN party, in the past we got confused on whose machine was whose and had to hook them all up to check the accounts. Now we simply put a small sticker and write our initials on it. I told them this was an extremely stupid thing they did but was happy to have almost all of my stuff back. Still missing a cell phone charger and aux cable but thanks to what they did without my knowledge I really do not have a choice in the matter anymore. I cannot really go to the police now, can I? The Xbox and PS4 are very easily proven to be mine by simply checking the accounts and dates on the machines. The laptops are even easier to prove so if anything happens from this I do not see myself getting in major trouble. I have informed Wells Fargo that I have the car back, they told me to make sure there is no damage and that another device was not installed. No new device installed, they would not tell me if they were going to pursue legal action or not, so I do not know what's going to happen there. And a user in the comments said, ideally your friends would have photographed your possessions in the monitoring company's office and left them there. That would have enabled you to take some further action against the company calling the police and reporting the stolen property. Because they simply took back the property, things get murky legally very quickly. Were they ethically in the clear to take the possessions? Probably. Was that legally the right course of action to take? Probably not. It would be ideal in this situation for the monitoring company to face some repercussions for what happened, but that does not seem likely at this point. Gynecologist took pictures of my junk and is being prosecuted. Throw away, to make a relatively long story short, my former gynecologist is facing a host of charges in a number of separate cases for being a very bad human being. It also now came to light that he secretly took photos of me and many other women during our exams and saved them for his own disgusting personal use. I am one of the only women who could be positively identified due to some very unique identifying features on and around my cooter. Thanks Vag. 
The DA has asked if I am still willing to prosecute as I will be basically going in it alone and hell yes I am. The crime he will be charged with seems extremely wimpy compared to the shocking violation I feel. But apparently it was the best they could come up with and if it is just one more nail in his coffin I am happy to be the hammer. A number of people have suggested I should sue him, I know he has no cash and his appearance of wealth was just a flashy facade. He's skeezy and broke, a civil suit would get nothing. However, an ER manager friend suggested bringing suit anyway as soon as he's convicted against his insurance which he would have had to operate as a doctor. She mentioned there could be HIPAA violations due to him taking photos without our knowledge or consent and then his storing them on multiple devices at his home and storing them for purposes other than medical use or information. Can anyone speak to this? And a user in the comments said, I suppose you could file a claim hoping he has malpractice insurance. I'm not sure if being a pervert is covered by his policy but talking to a med mall attorney cannot hurt but I would not expect this to be a substantial payout even if the claim is viable. Update to the <clears throat> picture story from before. So, still waiting for charges to be pressed, the defense is fighting a motion to combine this nasty guy's multiple concurrent cases into one and also fighting the validity of the warrant that allowed the cell phone photo evidence to be found. Apparently, there were actually hundreds of photographs on his phone, mine was just the only single one that could be 100% positively identified due to my unique general undies area. The DA checked in with me to be sure that I am still willing to move forward as the sole identified victim, I completely am and the more he tries to fight being exposed for his disgusting crimes on things like technicalities in the execution of a warrant, the more galvanized I become. Thank you to everyone for the support, it will likely be May before all arguments are heard and the judge makes a final decision on whether to combine the cases and whether the argument of the defense, re the warrant, holds any merit so this particular case can even be formally charged. It is stressful to hurry up and wait, but I cannot wait to nail that guy someday. And guys I gotta admit in this case it was not easy to find a real final update because I tried to contact the original OP but it was almost impossible to get in contact with that person so instead I actually found a person that at least claimed to be her friend or rather acquaintance and that acquaintance told me that the guy in question, the pervy gynecologist, actually went to prison after the cases were combined. Once again guys I cannot 100% identify if this is really true but it seems plausible to say the least. Either way unfortunately we have reached the end of the video. The video today is a little bit shorter because currently I am actually on a 3 to 4 day vacation with my girlfriend because of a national holiday here in Thailand. So I hope you don't mind the shorter stories. Either way thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to click the bell icon to not miss any of my videos, I hope you have a fantastic day and I see you again tomorrow.